Welcome to Let Freedom Ring. It feels good uh, to be back in the host seat as I was the guest last week. Um, very interesting. Uh, we appreciate Bobby Bollier coming in here and do that. We got security here as usual. Uh, Soapy Priyup having some heated words with Michael Felger today uh, on 98.5 The Sports Hub. So I've never been a big Michael Felger fan, but I might need to team up with him uh, to take down Soapy. So Michael Felger, if you are watching this, I, I apologize for everything I've said about you over the years, but uh, the fact you put Soapy in his place on your show was awesome. But my guest this week is none other than G Skills, Greg Kanopka. And I got it right right off the bat. Yeah, you got it perfect. I'm always worried about that. Was last name. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This uh, place is great. Yeah, no, welcome back, Greg. Now, you were a guest uh, over a year ago when we were really in the heart of the pandemic. Yeah. We were virtual. Yeah, and I think I had a mustache back then. Yeah, yeah, you looked, yeah, I think you had like the full. Yeah, the chops, the, the big. 70s look yeah yeah it was definitely i mean i was growing a mohawk at the time uh, <laughs> that was cool yeah yeah well the pandemic kind of just brings out these unique uh <laughs> yeah, styles we're not going to work every day we're working from home <laughs> um but yeah since your last appearance how, how you been how are things going i've been doing awesome uh still living in massachusetts <laughs> still hanging out with the cats and annie my girlfriend um I've been fishing a lot lately, which is amazing. I mean, I know with the pandemic, so many people had to give up hobbies, you know, or normal things that they do every week. Um, but for me, I feel like now that it's getting nicer out and um, the pandemic's kind of slowing down and showing signs of stuff going back to normal, it's been just amazing to like get ready for camping trips, you yeah. know, or like see family and kind of be able to go out to, to dinner, do whatever. And honestly, I mean, a lot of people probably did poorly during the pandemic. And I certainly, you know, like a lot of people, didn't have the most amazing time. But I think it also gave me an opportunity to play music, which yeah. I really like, you know, like all that time at home. I think it, you know, kind of like kickstarted me playing music again, just practicing and stuff, which I think is amazing. Yeah, no, no, that's good. And any particular fish that you like to, to go for when you are fishing? Oh, so I actually, the first time I went fishing this year, probably about like two or three weeks ago, I got a rainbow trout oh. right off the bat. And it was a pretty good sized one. Like it was a nice fish and I was pretty happy about that. But honestly, I just catch and release. I don't really like go for any like particular. I just like being outside, listening to music, like enjoying that nice New England weather. I mean, I honestly don't think there's much better than it. I did see, uh, now you might have heard last week in New Hampshire was free fishing day on Saturday. Oh, yeah. And I had never seen this before, but there was a guy at 7-Eleven. I was there to buy some sunflower seeds, some water. I was going to watch some softball. He asked to see all the different kinds of worms <laughs> and was just going through them, counting the worms, oh, looking at I'd never God. seen it. And it, be it became this huge line at 7-Eleven. People were getting angry. I'm like, dude. Get the Canadian crawlers and move on. Yeah. If you're going to be fishing around here, that's what you get. I mean, yeah. Or opinion. get a lure or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. Like, and then he settled on the uh, the trout worms, which are tinier. If I yeah, think. they're smaller. Which, you know, I didn't think Nash was like a place really for trout. Trout, out of all the fish around here trout you don't catch as many of them i'd yeah. say you know they're they're and they're so beautiful too compared to a lot of the <laughs> other fish you can get um in my years fishing around here and i've been fishing here since i was like probably six you know yeah. and grew up in new hampshire um but yeah there's really not as many trout as there are bass and stuff like that but i mean you still catch them and i honestly think i mean i'm wondering if that guy if I'd never seen anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like if it really would make a difference. I usually use lures because I like yeah. the sport of like faking the fish out, you know, with like a lure or even like a fake worm or something. I like power bait. Yeah, power yeah. bait's great. Like there's so many great things to use. So I usually skip on the worms. But when I do get them, I always kind of wonder like, does the fish really care if it's like a well, trout worm or like a big like... Are, like... I'm yelling from the back. I'm like, get the Canadian crawlers. <laughs> That's all you need around here. Yeah. So then he, so I don't know what happened because me and uh, Stephanie were leaving. He came back in. So I, 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 I'd never seen, I, it, it, worms are not that expensive. Yeah, it's like 250 it, or it's, something. It's just, just buy all three. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, dump them in the water. Yeah. But uh, no, it was very interesting. <laughs> it was very interesting. 
Um, so you're feeling good about life getting back to normal? Yeah, like that? definitely. I like it a lot. And honestly, just having plans <laughs> on the horizon is amazing to me. You know, like just being able to say like, oh, I'm going to do this in a couple of months or um, one of my absolute favorite spots, which even some viewers may may know this spot because it's in northern New Hampshire, but Malajawak State Park okay. in Errol, New Hampshire is my all time favorite camping spot. And I used to go there with my mom when, when we were younger and uh, Annie and I are going there in I think about a week or so, which is so exciting because it was canceled last year. The parks didn't open a lot of the, the campgrounds no. and stuff. so. That to me is like, really feels like things are going back to normal. You know, you can do the yearly camping trips that maybe were canceled or, and honestly, the nice weather, you know, people can do a lot of stuff outside that, you know, the pandemic really didn't have an effect on. And I think that was like a silver lining of the pandemic. Like people learned, hey, I can go outside and, you know, go fishing or kayaking and stuff like that. So I think we're in the best part of the year getting ready for that oh, nice yeah. weather. Yeah. And also just, you know, with the vaccine coming out and everything going back to normal, I'm super pumped for the next year. Now, Annie, Annie's from Massachusetts, right? Your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Is she familiar with Northern New Hampshire? Because I mean, that's a treat if you're not. Yeah. So it's actually funny because she did say initially, you know, living in Massachusetts, like we always kind of looked down on people from New Hampshire or <laughs> people in Massachusetts do yeah. sometimes look down Which on people. Which is like, we're a nicer state. I'm sorry. <laughs> Massachusetts, New Hampshire sorry. is beautiful, but yeah. it's kind of like it's not thought of in the same light as I think some other places where someone yeah. may say like, oh, Maine, you know, you've got all the seacoast and but New Hampshire really has it all. You know, we've got the lakes region, beautiful mountains in Errol when she we actually first went two years ago and she loved it. I mean, she was like, this is amazing. I have such a newfound respect for New Hampshire. So. Yeah, she's pretty excited to go back, and I'm so pumped to go back. There's nothing like Northern New Hampshire. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Southern. We're Southern New Hampshire boys, but there is nothing like Northern New Hampshire. Yeah, it is absolutely beautiful. And this Errol's actually really close to Canada, so when you go there and you stop in at the store, you can you get actually, a little French music sometimes. Yeah, right? you get yeah. some French vibes. They probably have poutine <laughs> around there. Oh you know? yeah, <laughs> I've definitely had some up there. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to address now, we, we haven't talked too much about this on the show, but I have an alter ego, uh, my softball alter ego, Tiny Pipes, who was, this guy's out of his mind. Um, he likes to flex at people, he likes to yell at people. Um, but you just re recently made a song, at my request, I mm -hmm. will say, um, and, and you've been making songs for a long time, um, but you made one for Tiny Pipes. And, yes. Uh, we'll release this on Facebook uh, after the show. Um, but what, how did that all come together? What, what was the, because obviously you were taking clips from me. Yes. And then I know there's some bass in there, but how, how did it go making that song? So first, I want to thank you for like bringing it up consistently because <laughs> the way I am. Every team stuff, meeting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that really gave me the drive where like, even when you first started mentioning, I'm kind of thinking like, what would a Tiny Pipes song sound like, yeah, you know? Yeah. And you have so much character in such a presence and, you know, just the whole like way that the softball league, you know, and I did re rec league softball for one year and just like that vibe of kind of like, you know, it's fun, competitive, but like fun and, you know, like people have character and personalities and it's just so amazing. Um, so I've been thinking about it a lot, but then, you know, with the pandemic, I started playing much more music, like where I would really sit down and practice and try and learn new things. So I've been listening to so much funk music, like, like Parliament, you know, Sly and the Family Stone, amazing music that has amazing bass in it. I do it, like that, yeah. Yeah, like that amazing bass style where Larry Graham, the, the bass player for Sly and the Family Stone, he actually created the style, which so many people know nowadays. But it's that style where you're playing with your thumb and slapping and plucking with either your middle finger or your pointer finger. And it kind of like re got me into like practicing and playing because it was a new thing. It was almost like it got me excited about playing again. Um, and I never played like that before. And this is like probably like six months ago. I started playing like that. And then, you know, I'd hear you say like, oh, Tiny, when's the song coming out? So I'm like playing and I came up with this thing and I was kind of like, this is it. You know, like I felt like if you were to have a bass line that were to emphasize tiny pipes, it would be slap bass. Cause it's, yeah. you know, it's upbeat. It's like in your face, it's like there, but it's like holding everything down. So I felt like it was the perfect musical bass sound. And I actually, originally before I used the, the recorded clips, 
um, I was trying to add chanting, you know, yeah. like, and I'm not a good singer by any, you know, like I'm a pretty bad singer, but I'm trying to add it and trying to like figure out all these different ways I could do it. And it just, nothing I did sounded good. And I wanted to include some of the clips in the audio yeah, tracks. Yeah. So I start just listening to drums and bass. I, I have a, a drum pedal that I can use in program like what the drums play. So I had it set up and I'm playing the bass line and I record it and my vocals just didn't work at all. So I started listening. I was just like scrolling, like listening to the the beat and I just found these parts that I thought yeah. were like, they're perfect in the tempo of the music is similar to the tempo, you know, the Tidy Pipes tempo. So yeah. it was like worked out perfectly. I, I gotta say, I love it. I've listened to it probably about 150 <laughs> times already. I was making everybody listen to it at softball. I, I, we do we do have sometimes we have a speaker with a play music. I'm coming up to that. Oh yes, that's what I was imagining yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Like it, the bass bumping, you know, yeah. like even the cheering at the beginning. Like all the cheering is from when you were up at bat or you know, like at an event or something like that. So like all those sound effects are from you, which is amazing. I gotta say, some of those clips I had forgot about that I had ever said. We're just gonna say this on the show. I've said some very ridiculous things. Uh, I'm sorry, Tiny Pipes has said some very <laughs> ridiculous things. Um, but no, no, we'll definitely get that out there for everybody to listen to uh, at some point. But it was fantastic. I loved it. Uh, thank you. It was, it was yeah. so fun to work on it. And honestly, I mean, the Tiny Pipes persona fits in perfectly with, you know, ha even having like a, a song, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it just, everything worked out perfectly. And it was awesome to like hear all those clips. Yeah. I love all those clips. Yeah. They just like beckon to be shared and like <laughs> out, out in front. It's so funny when one part goes, I go, this is personal. <laughs> that's like, honestly my yeah. favorite, that's one of my favorite parts yeah. in the whole thing. Like it, it was just so good. And I thought it was funny because when I'm trying to add like vocals, I even tried to add guitar. I added some guitar tracks and I ended up not using them because I thought this is a Tiny Pipes song. Yeah. The Tiny Pipes theme doesn't need things distracting from tiny pipes yeah. you know so it's just a real simple like i added some uh keyboard like the organ yeah which i was thinking sounded like almost like a, a sports you know organs a big like sporting oh, yeah. event and i heard that and it was like just similar enough so i was like this is perfect yeah no i loved it you've had a lot of great songs and people can appreciate that these songs you know you know when people have seen the cats video <laughs> talking about cats if you watch that video takeaways like man great it's shtick you gotta understand that yeah like, and i think most people do appreciate it but I, you know i've heard people go well i go if you don't get it then i <laughs> then you don't have any humor yeah then you don't have any humor because it is i'd like that upbeat kind of weird style you know like but it is funny um you know when some people see him they probably think like oh see sears and I am serious. I love cats. Yeah, but, which, yeah, you know, there, there's a part of, you know, embellishment or acting or yeah. that makes things interesting. Well, that's what they've always said, like, even with, like, pro wrestling, is that um, the best characters are just your personality on steroids. Oh, that's such a good you point. Know what I mean? Yeah. Which, which I would say your type of music is what that is. It's Greg turned full up all the <laughs> yeah. way. You know what I mean? So, that's such a good point. Um, and that's Tiny Pipes, too. That you is know? Tiny Pipes, too, because I am a crazy softball <laughs> uh, hardo. Um, but no, no, I love the song. We'll, we'll get it out there for everybody to listen to. But uh, we'll get into current events. Uh, this, this, uh, I got a couple questions on this. June is Pride Month mm -hmm. um, uh, for the LBGQT. There's a lot. I always yeah, and anything, I think there's this, every once in a while stuff gets added, added you know, yeah. more inclusive and stuff um, like that. What are your thoughts on Pride Month? Is it overall good for society? I think Pride Month is amazing. And honestly, mm -hmm. looking back, I remember being younger, you know, and being maybe 12 or so, and I don't remember an emphasis on it Pride Month. I don't and, think it was, a, I mean, there's been Pride Month. I don't know if, I think it was Obama that made it more official. Obviously, oh, and that would make sense. More 2015 is when yeah. the Supreme Court finally ruled, which was way overdue. Yeah, you should be able to marry who you want. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And like, I think it's great that now it's something that is more prevalent. And I think part of it's social media. You know, it's easier to get stuff out there. But I think it's fantastic. I mean, Annie and I have been watching. Uh, have 
have you ever seen RuPaul's Drag Race? Actually, or our heard guest, of it? Our guest two weeks ago. That's he was a big J Ro was a huge really? fan of that show. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! I <laughs> just started watching it. Annie was watching it, so I got hooked on it, and it's fascinating. And I was thinking, like, this is such a great time to get into this. You know, see something that maybe I don't know too much about. You know. Um, but be able to kind of just see something and to see people, it's really a great show. It's tough to describe what makes it so great, but I think just having media out there that re represents different groups of people is amazing, you know, because it gives people more understanding. And if someone maybe goes into a situation and initially they don't understand and they see like just different walks of life and different types of people, they can become more accepting, you know? And I, so I think it's great, Any any sort of, publicity you know like media stuff like that well i think our generation has changed it a little bit because when i was a kid okay uh someone being gay was never that big of a deal to me like yeah. I, I do admit kids say some really bad stuff yeah kids. some homophobic slurs were probably said in middle school yeah but when it really came down to someone actually being it never bothered me and i think that had a lot to do now i've had this take a lot with the MTV generation. Yeah. I would watch the real world and I knew who Pedro was. He, yeah. was. he was a gay man dying of AIDS. Yeah. And you felt very sympathetic to that. And you were actually seeing not only um, a gay person on television, a real, you know, he was dying of AIDS. Yeah. So you kind of really like, and they would always have a lot of different gay people on the real world. Yeah. And it just always, in, for me, was never like, I don't know. I don't it's know if MTV. Like that's how someone, you know, people are different. Regular people yeah. like any of us. Yeah. You know, like people have made such a big deal. I love that we're at a place where we can celebrate it. And uh, it should be in that. I hope we continue to do this. Yeah. And just be accepting of each other. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I agree 100%. I, I love seeing too, you know, like just the amount. And like you were saying, you know, like, you've always kind of been like, yeah, that's something you see and it's just like normal. Um, but the real world in Pedro may have been, you know, one of the first big moments where people got a chance to see and that. And I think we're, I'm only in second grade at that point. And somehow I was able to watch, <laughs> I was watching MTV all the time. <laughs> well, we didn't have the internet really, oh, yeah. you know, so. So like we always, and then I think even on the first season of the real world, there was, you know, so as much as MTV gets flack for someone that was young, like yeah. me, especially at that age, I was able to watch these real people. And it, I don't know if it shaped just like how my opinion was moving forward. It was like, no, they're just, they're just people like me or you. Yeah. You know? Oh, I, I think it's, it's so, it's such an important lesson to be able to look into someone else's life and it may be different um, than someone, someone's own life, but just to be able to say like, yeah, like I understand or, oh, I can get this now, you know? And I think sometimes the media can go the other direction where it's negative, where, you know, I've, it's called the, the media ecology theory, which is because I, back in school, I was a communications student. Um, but one of those, one of the media ecology studies that I read was really interesting because it was talking about how if you've never, like let's say someone's never met someone who's gay or has never met someone who's lesbian or anything like that. And then you fill in the blanks, you would fill them in from, you know, TV or whatever, which can be a good thing if it's a real example, like real world, but at the same time, if it's stereotypes and stuff like True. that, that can also form someone's opinion, whether it's race related or anything. Um, so media can be so powerful for that, but I think it's good to see like real stories, you know, and not like a negative, you know. It is one thing, you know, I think when Ellen decided that she was gonna come out on her show, she was still Ellen, but she was a character. Yeah. To me, the difference with the real world was like, these are real people. Yeah. Now that Ellen, obviously she was in her real life, but she's also playing a character yeah. at the same time. So yeah, I could, I could see that. Yeah. It, it's interesting to me because I feel like overall, I think homosexuality is more accepted now. I think the, the group that's getting more discriminated against than ever is the trans community. Mm -hmm. I don't, let's not, these people have always been here. Yeah. They've yeah. always been here. And you just have part of the population that just, they can't accept that. I think most do. Yeah. There's still like a good chunk that do not. 
Yeah, and I think a lot of people who do not, maybe it comes down to exposure. Yeah. Or, you know, being brought up by maybe. Lack of understanding. Yeah, you know, lack someone of that's understanding. That you know, is transgender and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, and it's sad because I, I sometimes wonder, you know, and I would say now, I mean, gay people are being more accepted accepted now than you know let's say 20 years ago and there's still so much work to be done but it's nice to see it moving in that trend but then it's also scary because i kind of think like well now the next group that you know people who may have initially been like oh yeah like we're against homosexuality but now they're seeing maybe trans men and women and thinking they're the next target because they're the most vulnerable they do right feel now. like that they are like the next target of of a lot of society yeah because they don't again they don't understand so yeah. it's, it is a lot like it was 20 years ago which kind of brings me to the next point um pride month has become very commercialized yeah now you're seeing like you know teams doing that and everything mm -hmm. like that is it becoming i think that's a good thing but obviously places are cashing in and my whole issue with it being commercialized now where were you 20 years ago. Yeah, all the most powerful entities. Where were you when Matthew Shepard was murdered? Yeah. Where were these companies standing up? That, 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 it's good to see the progression. Yeah. Some of my issues today is now it's like Budweiser's in on it. Yeah. Why couldn't you have been there in 1998? I wonder about you that know, too. I, I, that, that's something that I, I don't like the cashing in on it. Yeah, certainly. And it is interesting because I would be curious too, like, let's say, because I've, I've definitely seen it too, you know, like even like video games, like Call of Duty, I was playing the other day and they'll have a message that says, you know, we support. And so now video game companies are making their uh, opinions known to, to the gamers. But I kind of wonder, like, if there's big companies like Nike and Reebok and all these companies selling products that are pride based i mean i'm curious and i would hope that they'd take the money made from it and maybe i think some places are yeah put it towards charity or something yeah. and that would really be amazing and, and i'd like to see that like i was in spencer's the other day and they said you buy this shirt we're going to donate this much yeah it's good but it just some of it i guess not i don't know if it bothers me but it's like you you don't have the real balls to do it now yeah now you do but back then I felt like they needed you more than ever, and these companies were not there. Yeah, it's it's much more impressive for someone to stand alone for something they believe in. Yes, than when they're looking around and they're kind of like, oh well, everyone's doing it, so I can do it now, you know? Yeah, it's it's such a give and take because you want to see everybody doing it. Yeah, you want to see everybody doing it, but at the same time, it's like when it comes down to like a business, where was your guts? Yeah, where was your guts when they this community needed you? Yeah. You were not there. You know? and, and I wonder if part of it is almost like certain companies being scared, you know, at the time, which looking back, they, they may say like, oh, we wish we, you know, had done more. But it is something that it's, it's taken too long, you know, where it's like, now it is good to see the positive change, but. Very happy to see it. I yeah. mean, I, I, you know, there'll be a day, you know, now you can walk into the Fez Lane Mall, you see rainbow flags hanging up, and you yeah. know what? It's a good thing. Let, we want everybody to be equal. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad we're moving in that steps. And that means everybody, you know, be accepting of, it doesn't matter who it is. Yeah. If they're a good person, they got a good character. I don't care about the rest of it. Yeah, that's you know? that's honestly the best way to look at it. And that's how I feel too. It's like, it, and it's, I, I also feel like everyone doesn't have to agree on everything, you know, but even just having the ability to say like, you know, this person might be different, but I'm willing to, you know, communicate or listen and kind of like just be open, you know, for people to be more open in general and just listen to other people's stories can be huge and, you know, just expose certain things that, you know, are still going on that aren't the best. No, I agree. And I think Pride Month is a, is a fantastic thing and we should definitely continue it and put emphasis on it. I just want to call out some of these businesses in a way that's like, where were you yeah. 20 years ago? Because it needed to be there Or even a year ago or, or two. Or you know, it like... been five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. You know? Um, Kamala Harris, vice president, um, she had a tough interview the other day. She was asked about going to the border. Apparently, she has not been there yet. Uh, any take on that? Any take on the Biden administration so far? So, I think that story is very <laughs> interesting. And I would say... 
it's still early at this point to give someone complete, you know, like, just Admit, really, yeah. they dogged her, like, and I agree it wasn't. And they wanted him. Yeah. They wanted him. Yeah, and it, it wasn't the best interview, um, but my first thought, honestly, when I saw it was like, I mean, I've been to the border, it doesn't make me any more qualified. Granted, I'm not into politics, I'm not a politician, but I think with certain stuff like that, usually one side will hyper focus on one thing and it takes away from other issues that maybe would lead somewhere where it's kind of like okay she had a bad interview you know maybe let's focus on something else and granted i think trump got a lot of flack too about things you know that maybe were a little too you know it's like both sides will hyper focus on an issue and at this point i mean to me it's not (laughs) the end of the world yeah I totally agree with that. <laughs> I mean, the the right is looking for any sound by any tweet, anything they yeah. can do, because they feel like that's what was done to them over the last four years. But it's like your boy, your racist boy. Yeah, he was a racist. Trump is a racist. I'm not saying he's a, a white supremacist, but he was a racist. He gave us plenty to run with. Yeah, you didn't have to look for it. Yeah. There was no digging for it. He just served it up. Mm-hmm. You know, so now they're kind of reversing it. Um, and it's just, it gets a little ridiculous. I'm not saying Biden or Harris are perfect in any way, but I will take them over the alternative uh, any day of the week. Yeah, and I, I thought the same exact thing as you were. I was actually, I was, because I, I like to watch CNN and Fox kind of get both sides. And I was watching a Fox interview where they were ripping the interview apart they were just like in this they said she should be embarrassed she should be ashamed of this interview and it was about five different commentators all saying the same thing oh and then she says the thing about europe and i was thinking like okay yeah it's not the best interview but these people are saying you know it's a complete and utter embarrassment i was thinking like well when trump was making fun of a handicapped journalist they weren't saying that that was embarrassing or that was atrocious and he should be ashamed about that And if I'm comparing, you know, an interview where someone says they haven't been to Europe or the border and, you know, granted, she could still go and, you know, but at the same time, it's kind of like that to me is nothing compared to making fun of a handicapped Well, remember, so we we got Memorial Day, you know, we all love Memorial Day. We support our people that have been lost. Uh, We also support our veterans and everything. Kamala Harris. She put a tweet out on a Friday that said, have a great three-day weekend. And they went nuts. Yeah. She addressed Memorial Day on the day. But they ran with, she said, have a, it's not about a three-day weekend. Nope. Yeah. We know that, guys. But you're running with anything. And I think a lot of things, she's going to get a lot of, she's the first woman to ever do this. Yeah. Uh, she's of Indian descent and African-American. She's going to get a lot of flack. I mean... Yeah. A lot of stuff that Obama got was unwarranted just for the color of his skin. And, and I don't care what anybody says. That is a fact. Yeah. You know, when they say that we ripped on Trump, Trump gave it to us. <laughs> Trump yeah. handed it well, to he us. Well, he likes to rip on people. So I feel like if he can give it, he should be able to he take it He should be able too. to take it. Which, speaking of our ex-president, he believes that he will be reinstated. I don't think he knows how these things work. Do you see, see Trump being... You know, I mean, we did, and I want to address this, and it's kind of a disgrace to Fenway Park, and I was sickened by it. Uh, someone put down a banner that said Trump really won or Trump won. Oh. Um, are these people just, I, and I said this the other day, I think the right has gone full batshit crazy. I really do believe that. <laughs> um, any take on that? Um, well, it's really interesting because I remember when Trump was in power, you know, and I, even to this day, I'll hear so many people on you know probably both the right and the left side but they'll say um you know cancel culture don't we hate all these like you know snowflakes and the cancel culture and stuff like that but it's interesting because i'm looking at it i'm like well now that biden's in power it's kind of coming from the other side yeah where they're you know we have people ripping you know her apart for saying have a good three-day weekend you know that to me seems so like nitpicky and petty but to really be going after i mean if it was flipped and people were going after trump for for the same reason you know like the response would be like oh snowflakes like you know so it's kind of like our our division is just nuts it's absolutely nuts 
And, you know, I, I, I rip on the right a little bit, but the far left can be just as crazy. Yeah, equals, you know? equally crazy on both sides can really, like, get out of control. It, 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 we got to meet somewhere in the middle. But let's get to fan questions and comments. First one from Melissa Hodgson. Did I say Melissa's last name right? Yeah. Uh, she just said legend in a gift. <laughs> Shout out to Melissa. Um, and then Hussein Noor just wants to know, where did you get the shirt? Uh, I want to know where you uh, got that. Uh, oh. That T-shirt you're rocking. I want to know where you got it. So the picture to promote the show, we had that picture of you in the cat T-shirt. Where, where did you find that? So the amazing thing about that shirt is I actually coincidentally got it from the same place I got this shirt. And it was actually in Salem, Massachusetts. Um, and I was there one year with my mom and my brother. And my mom loves like spooky stuff. So we try and go there every year. And I got the cat shirt in like a T-shirt. It was like a witch T-shirt shop or something like that. But the company's called The Mountain, and uh, they make like cool animal animal shirts and stuff like that. Yeah. So, gotta rep the cats sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know how much you like them. Yeah. I'm actually thinking about getting one myself. Oh, that uh, would be amazing. Yeah, I, uh, but I want to teach the cat to come with me places. Like I want to have it on a leash. I want you, to take it hiking. You could, Melissa actually, who, I saw the who bag. Posted, yeah, the cat yeah. bag. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, getting into pop culture, just kind of two questions here. How'd you end up start making music and how'd you come up with the name G Skills? So when I first started playing music and really got into to starting to make music and that sort of thing, <coughs> um, it probably all stems from when I was probably about nine, my mom got me some cassettes in like a Walkman, you know, so like you'd play the tape on the go, which some viewers could, may not. And you could tape off the radio. Yeah, and you could record yeah. and stuff like that. And I still remember my mom got me a classic 50s hits tape and a Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons tape. And I just like immediately, I was like hooked, like listening to them so many times. And I also had a third tape, which was a recording of The Wizard of Oz on Broadway, oh, wow. which sounds so random, but like I still remember probably all those songs because I listened, you know, like any music I could get. Um, and then when I wanted to start playing guitar, because I was listening to the tapes and I was like, I got to learn how to do something like this, wanted to play guitar. But being a twin, my brother around the same time wanted to was play guitar. Was also a musician. Yeah. Hanson Barlow. Yeah. Right? Did I get the name right? Yeah. yeah. And he was, you know, twins. It's like, oh, he's copying me. He's copying me. I mentioned wanting to play the guitar too. And he flipped out. He was like upset, you know, like I was copying him. But I, I really, really probably one of the first bands I ever got into is The Who. And they have an amazing bass player. So I was like, oh, if I can't play guitar because my twin's going to rip yeah. on me about it forever then maybe i'll learn how to play bass so i actually learned how to play bass before guitar that's very awesome and and, and when you say you guys are twins uh, you got they're identical <laughs> yeah. i got yeah. confused with your brother at a bar and i was like why is greg <laughs> being a jerk i'm trying to say i don't yeah him. like he's ignoring you know <laughs> i was like but then i was like but is that greg and i didn't know you had a twin brother at the time so that was pretty cool and I could be him right now, and people just do it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you come up with G-Skills? Oh, uh, so it was when I was in high school, I was recording music. Just, I would do it for fun, and still why I do it. It's only like I just start playing music, want to record something. And at the time, I was always like, oh, it was only rock and roll, you know, like only Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, The Who, stuff like that. And I kind of had like a thing against like non played music you know like if it was any sort of like hip-hop or like electronic music or anything I was just like well they're not playing guitars or but then I got really into Biggie and I just immediately was like this is actually awesome I can't believe I was missing out on this so I started recording my own raps and they're bad like listening <laughs> back I'm like but it's interesting I was probably 16 or so in the name that I came up with for myself was G skills and my friends will still call me that to this day just from those like original recordings way back in the day and it just kind of stuck. It's kind of stuck. Yeah. I like that. Um, the other day was Mick Foley's uh, birthday. Big, big Mick Foley fan for me. Yes. Do you have a favorite Mick Foley moment from wrestling? Oh, hell in the cell. That's that's usually the top of the That game. one is amazing. And it's, oh my God, I saw the video again. You know, it's like finding on YouTube, re-watching it. It is a wonder that someone was it more brutally injured it was all his idea yeah it is absolutely insane and amazing and if anyone's watching this and they haven't seen it 
they got to check out that hell in the cell. I watched it live and I was just like, he might be dead. Yeah, it was insane. It was so good. Um, I was going to address, it's been 14 years uh, since the Benoit tragedy. Any take on that? Any shock on, on... So it's interesting. I mean, I watched the the Hernandez, Aaron Hernandez, you yeah. know, documentary not too long ago. And it's really interesting how I think for so long people kind of discounted the effects that like, you know, physical CG, yeah. hits to the brain can, you know, and what it can do to people. And it's just so sad overall because looking at it, I mean, it could have been something like that. I mean, you know, there's been so many players who play highly physical sports that can have, I mean, we've seen it with multiple ex NFL players, stuff like that. And it's just sad, you know. You're doing a flying headbutt from the top rope every night. Yeah. yeah your brain's gonna only take so much. So yeah. 14 years, but the other thing today, 14 years ago, was the final episode of The Sopranos. Oh my God. I know you're a big fan. I we talk love about this The Sopranos. Um, were you mad at the ending? When it originally happened, I've grown to like the ending. Were you mad at the time? I I wasn't, and I think a big part of it was honestly because you know, there was so much like so much stuff built up around. People were complaining. People were felt ripped off, like they didn't get a true ending. Um, but me personally, I always kind of liked that like weird story, or even just the fact that they may have been saying like, "We know they're not going to expect this. Let's do it." Like I like the idea of something that people weren't expecting. And at the time, I don't know if it was just liking something because people didn't like it and kind of, you going know. against the grain. Yeah, kinda. going against the grain. But I thought it was great. And I mean, I, I've thought of how else could they really, you know, end it. And I mean, it doesn't take away from the show. I can't really imagine another thing they could have done, you know, in that instance. Well, they beat New York. Or they came to this truce with New York, which yeah. is what the whole season was about. So how... That is the ending. Yeah. And then you don't know. I mean, maybe Tony. Like, they leave some up yeah. to the imagination, you know? And, like, some people think that, you know, it's from the viewpoint of the shooter and, you know, they're go- the family's going If there was bad. a shooter. Yeah, if we there was. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of like that idea, though, that people can <coughs> fill in the blanks and even to this day are still saying, like, what really happened, you know? I like that about the story. I, I At the time, I was very upset. I have grown to realize, I mean, I always, well, always my favorite shows at the time. I just appreciate the show so much that I've over the years been like, David Chase knew what he was doing. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. And uh, it actually works. It works 100%. You know? um, a couple things in sports. Bruins are out. I don't want to get too into it. We got a lot of upset <laughs> people about that. Uh, just wasn't their year. LeBron has his first round exit ever of the playoffs. Any take on that? Shocking. So, I mean, they, he was hurt a lot. But. Yeah, it, it's interesting because people may rag on him for it, but it's still like if that's the first time that he did it. 36 make, years old. He's been playing there since he was 18. Yeah, and just so fantastic. Like, it's just kind of like it was going to happen eventually, you know? Yeah. It may happen again before he retires. Um, but I think it's interesting. I don't know if you've seen anything about his number change. Have you seen that? He's going to go number six next year. Yeah. He did that. Yeah, that's what he was with the Heat. And then we went back to Cleveland. And 20, you know, whatever. LeBron's 23 and six. Very, you know, very Kobe-ish. Kobe yeah. was 24 and eight. But Kobe was with the same team the whole time. Um, yeah, interesting. It is interesting. And I wonder if that number change, because he, he had been like thinking about it before, but I wonder if part of him was like, hmm, maybe it's time, especially because of this last season. And, what, and, and, and you know what? They're going to sell more jerseys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I got to have the number six one. Yeah. You know, uh, let's do a couple. We've never done like a sports top fives. So we usually do this in pop culture. Do you have a top five quarterbacks of all time? Oh, man. So this is a really good question. And honestly, for anyone in New England, if they were to answer any differently, I would probably have some questions. But I mean, it all starts with Tom Brady, you know, like. But at the same time, I also think as someone who's always been watching, you know, New England, Tom Brady and, you know, Drew Bledsoe beforehand. I would say that I don't necessarily, you know, because I've been living in such a good, you know, sports world for so long. It's almost like it's Tom Brady, you know, and. Out of five quarterbacks, out because we league. idolize him yeah. so much, it's tough to then say, oh, and. So, you know, Tom, number one. No Tom, problem. yeah. 
Do you put Montana after him? I put Tom Brady number one, honestly. Okay. And that could partially be, though, because as a sports viewer, like, being able to witness that, it's something special. It's something we'll never, ever. ever yeah, see like, again. we'll never see that again. And even if, you know, there was a better quarterback, it, he wouldn't be better to me, you know, like, because I got to see and experience all those amazing seasons. Do you have seasons. any four, four others after him? I honestly, I would say Todd Brady. I remember Drew Bledsoe a little yeah. bit, you know, and like, but honestly, yeah, I, I honestly, out of respect for Tom Brady just leave it at and that. just, yeah, focusing on Tom Brady, I couldn't even come up with a number two because he's that high up there. Fair enough. What about top five Celtics? Oh, that is, that's much tougher. I would put Bob Cousy okay. as my number, number one. Um, because the way he played, I mean, watching clips, it's interesting because a lot of the sports or a lot of the athletes that I would put on these lists would be people I've seen. Granted, I've never watched, you know, wasn't around for Bob Cousy, but watching old videos and reading about him and just his life was amazing. He was like a gas pump. He'd pump gas oh, and wow. ended up like walking on and trying out for the Celtics. And everyone was like, you're pretty good at basketball. But it's, it's so that story is like fascinating to me. Pumping gas one day basketball superstar like a couple of weeks later so who, do you fill that up could you fill out with yes that? so i would i mean of course ray allen okay you know i'd have to put him on kevin garnett paul pierce i would put them on that list now would you put them as one or just cause... i would put them each on their own okay you know like and they they fit such different roles and their dynamic together was so amazing and so wonderful to see you know, you put Bird and Russell in there too. So it's so interesting. Those were my two other Larry Bird, hands down, and Bill Russell, hands down, hands down. But it's so funny you brought them up because Bill Russell needs to be on that list. And so well, he won the most. Bird. You know, when someone I got asked last week, what's on your Mount Rushmore of New England sports? Yeah, I had, have, I, had I had Larry Bird, and as much as Bill Russell did, he, he deserves it, but. It was just a very different league at the time. Yeah. And Bird was the guy of the 80s. Yeah. Know? So, all right. Well, do you have a top five baseball players at all? Well, you're not, I don't know if you're big into that. I'm, no, but I will. I do have a list of baseball players. Okay. One of them is kind of interesting, and you'll probably laugh at first, but I would say Bill Buckner. Oh, and the wow. reason I bring him up is because anyone to endure that much torture and have his whole entire career based on that one play when he was a good player. Great player. Is such a tragedy that I would put him on a list just to say he deserves more credit. And he got to come back. After they won the two world, he got to come back in 08 and was celebrated. Yeah. And he passed away recently. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he was so good too. And uh, he was in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, and could he? like laugh. They made fun of the event, yeah, of yeah. course, but. Yeah, they. It was really good, and for him to laugh about it. I mean, that's like a true sport. Well, he got true to be sportsman. able to. It took time. Yeah, it took time. Anybody else on that list? That you, that you, I have, you I have to put Pedro. You yeah. know, growing up, like we're similar in age, and we've seen. You know, Pedro Pedro's is huge. Um, it would be tough to pick. A, I would say David Ortiz. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he was huge within. I mean, and he means more to the baseball than just being a player yeah definitely you know, or the city of boston i should say he's yeah. huge and and david ortiz too now he's working you know front office like i hope his thing says big poppy he needs a statue <laughs> he needs yes a statue. yeah definitely um all right no no good to bring up bill buckner and one thing we addressed this last time on your show greg had a signed larry bird basketball <laughs> yeah. that he played with yeah Almost something like out of the Sandlot, <laughs> yeah. uh, like the Babe Ruth ball. Yeah. Any regrets on that? I know we talked Defin about this like Definite last regrets. <laughs> and I've actually, it's so funny because I have looked up, like every once in a while, I do check out and I'm like, hmm, I wonder how much a Larry Bird basketball would go for. And it's so, it's pretty expensive. Something that I wouldn't just randomly yeah. buy. You'd have to have a conversation with the girlfriend. Yeah, first. I'd just be like, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Like I have to make up for this one big mistake. Yeah. But overall, I mean, 
I would say if I were to choose whether I regret it, which I do a little bit, but at the same time, I got to dribble a ball. Felt good to do. Yeah, like in my mind, being able to use a ball that Larry Bird yeah. signed is probably something no one would do. So I probably have an experience that all those people who still have the side balls, they didn't they get did to not, experience that. Yeah. Now you still have the ball? No, well, no. it's probably in my mom's garage, yes. honestly. I should go find it, but it is sad. It's probably right. in the garage, like sitting maybe, in the corner. Maybe we have to do, you know, <laughs> let Freedom Ring on location and find yeah. this ball. Yeah, the uh, unveiling of the log lost yeah. Larry Bird How bad ball. is the signature at this point? Uh, that could be an interesting uh, thing to do. Uh, let's get into my favorite topic, uh, or my favorite uh, segment of the show, which is Blank versus Blank. You've done this before. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we're going to give you two things, two people, two anything. you got to pick one and tell us why. Um, first one is uh, one of my favorite musicians, which is Bradley Knoll. Um, I've maybe unfairly com compared him to Kurt Cobain over the years um, because I thought Bradley Knoll had something different to offer, much like Kurt Cobain did. Yeah. Uh, you can only take one, Kurt Cobain or Bradley Knoll. I would definitely pick Kurt Cobain, and I'm a huge Nirvana fan, but at the same time, I don't think that that Sublime gets the respect. In terms of a lot of bands from that very, time. A lot of different music together. Yeah, and they were, I mean, they were so different <coughs> sounding than a lot of those bands, you know? Like, they were lumped into that grunge, you know, like Nirvana was so much harder sounding, but I like how Sublime had, you know, like influences that maybe some other bands didn't have around that same time. They were very unique sounding. Yeah, and I mean, I, I get it, because I always say Bradley Noel is a bigger genius. And I believe that. He's, he was so talented. Cobain was a twisted soul <laughs> yeah. who did bring out a big genre of music that wasn't there before. So I gotta yeah. give him that. But I still think, for the type of music I like, Bradley Noel, to me, was better. And, and I, I think that's a great a great answer. And I would honestly think more people would, you know, like give props. But I think that they are underrated. And he's underrated as a song. I mean. Big time. Yeah, he's very underrated. And I liked how he just go off in tangents and something. Like, if you ever listen to 40 Ounces of Freedom, I mean, sometimes you're like, where is he going with this? But I love it. You yeah. Know? Cobain is just so like. Down in the dumps. It's more of a downer story. It's more, yeah, it's more serious. It's more grungy. It's tougher to even hear what he's singing. And I think that's the point for some of it. It's kind of abstract. Um, but I think with, with Sublime's music, it was more upbeat, more fun, which I really like. Two musicians taken absolutely way too soon. Yeah. Um, Roddy Piper, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I'd say Piper. Piper. Maybe one of the greatest heels of all time. <laughs> you know. And uh, that that is a skill in itself, you know? Like I feel like sometimes people get the the big props like, you know, the under well, he I guess he's an easy choice, the Undertaker, but like a lot of people get the props who are like the big, you know, character like that, but I mean, sometimes it takes some to like take a couple of hits or like do something different or you know. Yeah, he was great. Um, dogs or cats? If you only keep oh. one. I know you have more cats. Yeah, but. that's actually a really tough one. I love cats and I love dogs, and I would honestly say that's maybe one of the only questions that I couldn't, I couldn't put one ahead of the really? other. And now a lot of people would probably say like, "Oh, not cats. Like you're letting your feline friends down." But dogs are amazing, and I and I grew up with dogs and cats. And dogs are fantastic too. Just very different creatures. They're the two best. Yeah, you know, they're for so what, domesticated good. Domesticated animals. Yeah. Uh, John Cena or The Rock? Oh, I'm gonna have to go with The Rock. I mean, because I remember back back when he was, you know, like first starting to get really well known, the Attitude Era. I mean, that was when I was really into wrestling, and The Rock was a huge part of that. So I have to give it to The Rock. I nothing against John Cena. He's great you know he's interesting but he's the rock the has champ. yeah he is not and he he does not have the character like the rock the rock has so much character and charisma even when he was bad you know it's like people are still like oh but he's he's the rock he's got he's got the elbow <laughs> rating all right here's an interesting one 
We got one from a very famous musician. I think it was his first band, Eric Clapton, Cream. Mm -hmm. Then you had Paul McCartney, who was a Beatle. He goes on to another band called Wings. Cream or Wings? Oh, that's such a good question. I think Cream is awesome. And as, as musicians, Eric Clapton's one of the best. Without, um, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. Ginger Baker, the drummer for Cream, was amazing. And his drumming style is so ahead of so many players. It was just fantastic. And then Jack Bruce, the bass player, was amazing too. They were all so great. Great power trio. Wings is great too. Um, but I would... I would put Cream. Cream's probably more legendary. Yeah. Because Wings was like a thing that Paul did after the Beatles. Yeah, and they had yeah. a lot of great stuff. And like Paul had a lot of amazing music. Th has a lot of amazing music throughout his career. But I think, and I love the Beatles. You know, like they're well, all this great. This next one's going to be really good then. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. John Lennon or Paul McCartney? Oh, that that is an awesome question. <laughs> It's interesting. I used to always think John, you know, because I always thought like he's more edgy. He's kind of more, he's less musical in the sense that like Paul could play guitar, bass and everything. But Paul was also writing the more upbeat songs and John was more out there. I feel like he was kind of like, you know, more out there, less show tune-y kind of. Like Paul had a very like show tune inspired, like classical um but yeah, it's so tough. I would say John, but oh. I'm willing to bet maybe in six months or so it could be Paul because I've been really into revisiting all See, their I'm songs. See, I'm going Paul McCartney. As much as John Lennon was great, I like Paul McCartney better. He also, he had the lengthier, I mean, unfortunately, Paul John Lennon was killed. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you could just see like all the stuff that Paul McCartney's done is, I mean, the guy doesn't really make things that aren't hits. Yeah. You know? Um, better front man. Ooh. Now this is a tough one. Freddie Mercury or Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Freddie Mercury, hands down. It, it, I mean, is he the best of all time for a front man of a band? I would say for me personally, I would say Mick Jagger. Okay. I think Mick Jagger, Roger Daltrey too is fantastic from The Who. Um, but yeah, I... I have to give it to Freddie Mercury. He was such an amazing singer. I mean, I've seen a lot. There's a live version of Somebody to Love that to me is one of the best live performances I have ever seen. And although I love Flea and the Red Hot Chili Peppers have released great stuff. And as a bass player, I love Flea. But I don't think Anthony Kiedis to me that, is. I mean, it's hard to have the stage presence of a Freddie Mercury. Yeah. I will say the first concert I ever went to was Red Hot Chili Peppers. Really? Was it awesome? Yeah, it was in like 99. It was un oh. right after, you know, California. Uh, oh. No, what was the they, name? Well, they was had Blood Sugar Sex Magic, California-cation. Cation was in yeah. 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 That was... Oh, Flea probably un ripped up the bass and he was playing. I mean, from what I can remember now, it's like 21 years ago, but like unbelievable stuff. Um, Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels? I have to say Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart's amazing. But as a young kid, when I first got into wrestling, I think one of my favorite characters initially was Shawn Michaels, you know, like the heartbreak kid. Like he it was, was cool. You yeah, like he wore like heart pants and stuff. Like I think I'm cute. Yeah. I know I'm sexy. Yeah, yeah he was he funny. Was he had like, what well, he had like the kick move. Like he yeah, was like very kick. agile. Like he was great. So I like Bret Hart and, but yeah, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels is my all-time favorite, but it's very hard for me to even pick that because of like how much they were to me. Yeah. Like, obviously, as when I first became a wrestling fan, it was Hogan and Warrior, and oh, then they kind of went fantastic. off, and it was Brett and Shawn, and then these two like couldn't stand each other in real life. You know. Yeah. Um, two songs of yours, Spaghetti Boys, <laughs> or Talking About Cats. Oh. Well, I girl, love Talking About Cats, but I would put. Tommy Tomato. Yeah, I'd put the Spaghetti yeah. Boys first because I had more fun recording it. Yeah. You know, like I feel like talking about cats, it was it was more of a video project where, you know, I did the rap and, you know, I I had more fun filming some of the scenes where I was like crawling like a cat. Yeah. And it was fun to record too, but I had much more fun. You know, there's more instruments, like it wasn't as like like a beat that I used. It was like 
I was playing all the instruments for the Spaghetti Boys song, and to me that was just way more fun. <laughs> those, those all those songs, and then the sports song was a lot of fun. Yeah, I gotta you gotta send that over to me because I don't know where to find them. Oh yeah, I gotta like organize them or something. Maybe and, you or yeah, maybe you could put them on YouTube or yeah, something. yeah, G G Skills uh, YouTube channel. I could just have them all there. Yeah. Make a video for each. Get hey, some spaghetti. I think we're gonna have to make a tiny pipes video. So oh, certainly, ideas. yeah. Uh, last one, very tough. This is tough. These are two fans of yours. Two co-workers of ours. Ooh. I got Jesse Martino. Ooh. Bob Saucier, a.k.a. Bobby Sauce. Oh, are they wrestling or is this just a choice between these they, two you amazing know, they could be people? Wrestling. We could put them in a wrestling <laughs> match. Who wins that? It would be so tough. Bob is absolutely Bob's fantastic. A yeah, and Jesse's a amazing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Bob has more combat experience yeah. than Jesse, I believe. Yeah. You know, but... If it were wrestling and they each had their own amazing persona, I could see them as eventually teaming up. You know, maybe initially, but they're could they're both too team. great. They would yeah. eventually team up and they'd do the what's best for the whole. <laughs> they would fight the good fight. Two great guys. We yeah. want to get Bob Saucier on here. Bob is fantastic. We're trying, but he's like, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, and Bob's just one of those, but he definitely has some stories to tell, so... Um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate coming on today, Greg. This is oh, a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. It's um, amazing. What's your YouTube channel again? So I honestly am really bad with like categorizing and organizing everything, but I believe it's under G Skills, and if not, I'll have to update that. We'll have to. We'll have it could to be G Kanopka eighty eight too. It could be that I, I found it before, but if if you do get the chance <laughs> to see Greg's video about talking about cats, it is hilarious the song's pretty good so yeah. definitely check it out um soapy pre-op again we're glad uh, security is working because he's he has not been able to attack me it's been about two months <laughs> it's so, been a safety period yeah i mean so it's been nice um but anyways uh everybody out there continue to keep your heads up i guess you don't have to wear a mask as much as you used to uh if you're vaccinated but uh everybody out there uh, have a great week and uh, until next time let freedom ring